Come on and listen to that band. Hey there, ain't it grand? What's up, fish tank people? This is Aquahound, and welcome to another episode of Aquahound's Dirty Little Secrets. And today we're going to be going over one of my favorite topics, and that is the nitrogen cycle. Now, it is probably the least understood topic when it comes to keeping fish, whether freshwater or saltwater. And that is because people can't see it with their eyes. They can't see what's going on. When they see algae, they know it's an algae problem. But when you first start up a tank, you don't see the bacteria growing in your tank that biological filtration being created in front of your eyes it just doesn't happen and so on today's episode the nitrogen cycle is what it's all about okay because when you start up your tank okay this looks good this is about a three day old tank you got your live rock your live sand you got circulation you got your lighting you got filtration you got your temperature set right your saltalinity is good you're thinking it's good to go. Let's add fish. Wrong. Want to know why? Because those colonizing bacterias, the nitrifying bacterias, have not yet formed in your tank. Okay. Now, for these nitrifying bacterias to form in your water colony, there's several steps that need to be completed, and that is called cycling your tank. So now that we have a better understanding of what the nitrogen cycle is, let's go more in depth and take a look at each step. Okay, so step number one. You got your ammonia. Now, ammonia is a chemical that is given off by uh, fish waste, plants, um, dead organisms. A lot of people will add fish food or dead pieces of shrimp just to get that ammonia built up in their tank. Now what happens is, as this ammonia gets built up, what's going to happen is you're going to get bacteria that consume it. And that's the next step, nitrosomatous bacteria. What they do is they consume that ammonia and then they give off a less lethal toxic chemical compared to ammonia and that's called nitrite. Now, once that nitrite starts to form, and nitrite is bacteria that consumes your ammonia. So that'll bring your ammonia levels down. But then what's going to happen is as your nitrite starts to build up, it's going to give off waste. And then what's going to happen is there's going to be another bacteria, which is the next step, and that's called nitrobacter. And what that's going to do is it's going to consume your nitrite, which will bring them levels down, hopefully close to zero and then it's going to give off nitrate which is probably the less lethal chemical in your tank when it's all said and done and that's your process now what's going to happen is that ammonia is going to be constantly created through the waste of fish and dying off matter fish food and then that nitrite is going to the nitrosomonas is going to come along and it's going to create nitrite and then as that goes through, nitrobacter is going to come in, it's going to eat it, and it's going to produce that nitrate. That's the nitrogen cycle. It's all natural. It's just a long process. It could take from two to six weeks, all depending on your tank. Okay. Now what's going to happen is at the end, they're just going to keep producing that nitrate. Okay. That nitrobacter is just going to keep eating, and it's going to uh, release the waste of nitrate in your water and eventually it's going to get really saturated in your water column and you're going to have a lot of nitrate now nitrate is uh, probably the least lethal of all three it is the least lethal and what's going to happen is if it builds up too much then your fish will die okay because it's going to mess with their respiration and it's just going to probably kill everything and that's where you come in with your water change Okay, your water change will dilute, it'll saturate that water and it'll get rid of that nitrate, it'll bring the level down a little bit lower. Which is good because that's the end of the cycle. Okay, 
Now, in order to test your cycle, you got to have a kit. You got ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Now, this is a three-day-old tank. Okay, so I'm guessing the ammonia levels in the nitrites are going to be kind of high. I've been adding a little bit of fish food just to mess around with it because I got in today Dr. Tim's one and only nitrifying bacteria. Now what this does is it adds that bacteria and it's really nice because it's an automatic colony of nitrifying bacteria in your tank. You don't have to wait around for that process to go through. Okay. What this does is you put it in your tank, the nitrifying bacteria, and then you can add ammonium. Uh, you can buy actual drops of ammonium and put them in there to feed your nitrifying bacteria. And it'll get that process rolling. And then uh, it only takes, they say you can add the stuff right away and then you can put your fish in. Which I'm going to test because actually I got it in today and I'm going to do a test on it. And I'm going to show you here as I empty it in here after I take my test of the levels I have now. I'm going to dump in my nitrifying bacteria. I'm going to add my ammonium. And then what I'm going to do is in a day I should have some invertebrates coming in for my cleanup crew. And I'm going to add them. But before I add them I'm going to do a test to make sure that ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate levels are all really low and are suitable for my new tank mates. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking tests of my water quality and I'm going to check out my ammonia, my nitrite, and my nitrate levels. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to explain to you kind of all about the new tank syndrome it's called. New tank versus old tank syndrome. New tank is when you first add your water and you don't have any of that nitrifying bacteria growing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that as I'm taking the test of my water. So let's do it. We're going to talk about the ammonia spike. As your first fish in the new aquarium begin to thrive, they will produce waste, which will produce ammonia. And without any nitrosomonas colonies established in your aquarium to consume this ammonia, levels will climb and spike until the ammonia loving bacteria population catches up. Now ammonia levels then start to decline once the rate of ammonia production is less than the rate of which is broken down by that nitrosomonas bacteria. Now let's talk about the nitrite spike. Nitrite goes through a very similar spike. Nitrite is produced through the biological activities of nitrosomonas as they eat ammonia. As the numbers increase, so does the amount of nitrite and in turn the nitrite hungry nitrobacter will begin booming from the abundance of nutrients. Now the nitrite levels will rise until the number of bacteria has increased to the point at which they break down the nitrate faster than it is produced. Hence it's just one big process, it's a waiting game and you gotta wait for these bacteria to colonize and to further eat your ammonia and your nitrate. Now, the last step in testing our water, we're going to be looking at nitrate. This is the end product of the whole cycle, nitrate. And nitrate in low concentrations is not toxic to fish and invertebrates, but it can cause other problems in the aquarium. And if you let it go too long, that nitrate level will get too high and that will cause trouble with your fish and invertebrates. And the one big thing is the best way to control nitrate is just through water changes. That's all you gotta do. You saturate the water, you take out that nitrate, and boom! Your water level and your quality. And the best way to control your nitrate is just through simple water changes. It saturates the water and it removes them nitrates, keeping them low enough so your fish and vertebrates aren't hurt by it. And the best way to control your nitrate levels is just through water changes. It's really simple. Every week, every week to two weeks, do a 25% water change, you could probably get away with a 15% water change. 
at first I'd start with the 25% and then as it goes on I go on with a 10 to 15 percent water change weekly and that's just to really saturate out them nitrate levels and here's what my tests came out to be now ammonia is on the left and according to the chart it's got all oh, about 0.25 parts per million in it which isn't high at all really and then my nitrite it is extremely high it's about uh, two parts per million and then my nitrate there's a little bit of that in there there's about uh, I'd say five to ten parts per million so my tank is not cycled and it's only three days old and there's hardly anything in it really to produce any ammonia all right now that the tests are complete I see what's going on in my tank and not a whole lot of ammonia and that's understandable I only got a few pieces of flake food in there that's not going to really boost my ammonia levels my nitrite is extremely high and my nitrate is uh, it's not too high but it's kinda high okay so it's a three day old tank uh, not much is going on in it okay so now what I'm gonna do is to conclude this part one of Aquahound's Dirty Little Secrets the nitrogen cycle what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add my Dr. Tim's one and only live nitrifying bacteria and it looks like this There we go. You can read it if you want. This stuff costs about 20 bucks and I got this from Dr. Foster and Smith. And what I got to go along with it is this stuff here. Ammonium chloride solution for fishless cycling. Now I add one drop of this for every 10 gallons. So I'm gonna add this stuff, the whole bottle, because it's just nitrifying bacteria, you can't overdose. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this ammonium chloride, which will feed this nitrifying bacteria. Okay? So that'll conclude this part of the show. I'm going to add this stuff, and then we're going to come back in a couple days. We're going to do a complete new water test with my testing kit. We're going to see if the levels are low enough to add my invertebrates that are coming in very soon well let's add this stuff because we gotta get the cycle rocking alright take this shake it up get the bacteria activated we're gonna dump it in we're gonna set this nitrifying bacteria to really go to work and put the nitrogen cycle in full gear alright here we go dumping it in Dump this stuff in, whole bottle. There's all the bacteria going to town. There we go. Now, it's going to make my tank look a little cloudy, but that'll clear up in a bit. That's just the bacteria. Now, that's a lot of bacteria to add in your tank, but it's all good bacteria. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add this stuff all right now i'm going to read the instructions for those of you who want to know how to do it at home okay to add ammonia to the aquarium during a fishless cycle process add one drop of solution per gallon of aquarium water to achieve an ammonia nitrogen concentration okay do not exceed five milligrams per liter in the aquarium during cycling Use test kits to monitor progress. Use in conjunction with Dr. Tim's Aquatics one and only live nitrifying bacteria to quickly and safely cycle a new aquarium. Okay, and then he's got his website on there. You can go right on there and see how to do it if you want, if you don't trust me. But here we go. I'm going to add, what do we got? Add one drop of solution per gallon. So this is close to a 20 gallon tank, so we're going to give it two drops here. One. Two. All right. 
And now, my nitrifying bacteria has ammonium. Now we wait. Not long. Not two, not six weeks. Hopefully not even a couple days. According to his website, this stuff should work instantly. You can go ahead and add your fish right away to speed up the process because the fish give off ammonia through waste. But instead we're going to do the fish cycling because I don't have any fish or any invertebrates or anything that can really give off waste right now besides flake food. So I went ahead and bought this ammonium chloride which is only like three bucks. So overall you can cycle your tank very quickly with close to only 25 bucks which isn't bad. It's better than waiting six weeks. It's a painful wait especially when you want to get your fish in there. And now to conclude what I want to say is everybody that wants to get into the hobby needs good testing equipment whether it's test strips or this liquid form of testing, the liquid droplets. And API makes really good testing kits. They got them for salt water, fresh water, and they got them for the reef aquarium as well. Okay, so it's really important to have a good testing kit because you have to test your waters daily, especially when you're going through this cycle. You want to know whether or not your ammonia and your nitrite levels are low, pretty much near zero. They have to be in order for you to add your fish. So that'll do it for today's show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope the nitrogen cycle makes a heck of a lot more sense because at first I was really confused by the whole idea of bacteria forming in my water and the whole biological filter filtration thing really just messed with my mind. So uh, that'll do it for today's show of uh, Aquahound's Dirty Little Secrets. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.